So many, many different combinatorial constructions have been defined, uh, and we don't have time to go through all of them, but uh, I'll do one more uh, called substitution. So these are the ones that uh, we've discussed so far uh, in this lecture. Disjoint union, Cartesian product, sequence, power set, and multiset. Uh, and again, uh, every one of these has uh, immediate uh, translation to uh, a generating function. Uh, and there's uh, many others that uh, are, are available and still uh, being invented. Uh, so I, I just want to look at one more example uh, called substitution. Uh, so again, we have A and B uh, classes and you have their generating functions. Uh, substitution is uh, written with this operation A open circle B in brackets. And what it says is to replace each object in uh, an instance of A with an object from B. And if you do that, uh, you get the uh, compound generating function A of B of Z. Uh, so, uh, they, and the canonical example of that is uh, called enumeration of two three trees. Uh, two three trees uh, are uh, an interesting uh, combinatorial structure uh, that actually have uh, important practical applications uh, in computer science. Uh, again, data structures that are used to implement fast search. Uh, and there are trees in which uh, the distance from the root to the bottom uh, is always the same. Uh, and every node has uh, exactly two or three children. Uh, so there's only one, two, three tree with four external nodes, uh, but there's two with five external nodes. It's got to be a two node and a three node, and the three node can be either on the left or the right. There's also two with uh, six external nodes. You could have two threes or you could have three twos, uh, and so forth. So how many two, three trees are there with n nodes? Uh, and with the substitution operation, uh, it's easy to write down uh, a generating function equation uh, for these types of trees. Uh, so that's the generating function equation using substitution. Uh, to get a 2-3 tree, uh, what you do is you take each external node and replace it either with a 2-node or a 3-node. Then the distance from the root to the bottom is always the same. Uh, so that construction is a way to construct all 2-3 three trees. And you want to pick out the coefficient of z to the n in that to find out the number of two, three trees with n nodes. Uh, but uh, the combinatorial construction immediately gives the, uh, that OGF equation. Now that's a more complicated kind of OGF equation uh, than we've seen. Uh, we can check that it, that it works. Uh, from the previous slide, here's the uh, leading term uh, of the uh, generating function. Uh, there's one, two, three, and four. There's two, or five, and six, three, or seven, or four, or eight, and so forth. Uh, and if you just plug in z squared plus z cubed uh, and collect terms, uh, then uh, you'll see that you get one, two, one, three, uh, <coughs> one, four, two fives, two sixes, three sevens, and so forth. Uh, so uh, that's an interesting OGF equation that we get from substitution. Uh, uh, now, coefficient asymptotics of this one is extremely uh, difficult, and we'll uh, talk a bit, a bit about it later. It actually has oscillations in the leading term, uh, and that's a, a reference for that, uh, but we'll talk about it later. Uh, so uh, just to finish up, uh, I want to give some uh, quotes to, uh, uh, it seems so natural to uh, immediately get generating function equations from combinatorial construction. Uh, that, uh, but this approach uh, definitely was controversial uh, for a while. Uh, so this is a quote uh, from uh, 1968, not all that long ago, uh, where uh, Berger said that uh, really what combinatorials should be doing is, uh, is find a bijection. Uh, you know, th that's really uh, what we want to know. Why, why is it that the number of trees of n nodes is exactly the same as the number of binary trees with n external nodes and so forth? Uh, so uh, property is understood better when one constructs a bijection than when one calculates the coefficients of a polynomial whose variables have no particular meaning. And what he said was, the method of generating functions, which has had devastating effects for a century, has fallen into obsolescence for this reason. Uh, it's something about variables that have no meaning. And devastating effects, I'm not quite sure uh, what he meant. 
Uh, but where Philippe came to understand, uh, despite this attitude, which was a prevailing attitude uh, in many circles when he was a student, uh, Philippe came to understand uh, in the 80s and 90s that generating functions really are the central objects of the, of the theory of analytic combinatorics. They're not a mere artifact to solve recurrences, uh, as uh, ma many people believe. They're the central object. Uh, we can get generating functions from the symbolic method, uh, and then we can use generating functions to get uh, coefficient uh, asymptotics. Uh, so I just want to finish with the uh, overview uh, that uh, I started with, uh, that we use the symbolic method to get generating functions. And I just want to point out that we get generating function equations that vary widely in nature. Uh, we have all these strange types of equations that uh, arise when we use the symbolic method uh, and many more. So uh, it's not uh, it, it's necessarily going to be a challenge to get coefficient asymptotics out of uh, all these types of equations. Uh, that's for uh, part two of the course. Uh, so that's a, just a look at uh, another uh, uh, construction within the symbolic method and uh, a comment on uh, the various types of generating functions that uh, we might derive.